Hi, my name is Jin Hong Zhang, founder and president of Full Potential Community. Follow your passion, play big with a community of support. We bring people who are following their passion, doing what they love to do together to support people who want to follow their passion. Today we have Carrie Sylvester, and she's uh, the Zootopia girl, I call her. She's so passionate about the wild animals, wildlife, and uh, the balance of animal and human and our environment. So Carrie, tell us what is uh, Zootopia? Zootopia is a wildlife and environmental education organization for children and families, and we provide programs. We teach about wildlife and the ecosystems and how the ecosystems fit together, why they're important on the planet, and most importantly, we teach about green living and how everybody can, um, what they can do to lower their impact to help bring balance back to the planet. Oh, wow, that's great. That's what we need nowadays. Yeah. So what? What makes you so passionate about uh, what you're doing? Um, I've been involved with animals for my entire life, from the time I was little. I've, my parents always had animals around us, so I, I've always had a connection with the animals. And I just saw from a very early age that a way to give back to the animals and provide something for the animals and for ourselves, because the animals are so important to us also, is to teach people about them. So from a very early age, I was driven to teach people about the animals to provide for both humans and animals. So uh, what do you envision um, for Zootopia? Uh, that's a big question. <laughs> um, for Zootopia, the full vision of Zootopia is we want, our commitment is to have a facility. Uh -huh. So we'll have a permanent home it would be a piece of property. Our goal is to have it be a, a conservation effort. We want to be assisting a, an endangered species in some way. We're not sure how that's gonna happen because we don't have the property yet. And on that facility, we would have a collection of animals that would fulfill on our educational, our wildlife education aspect. And we would also have a full camp facility. So we would have all the camping bungalows for the kids and the families to stay in and people would come and we would have um, many programs that we will be providing. Um, family camp weekends, overnight campouts, week-long campouts, just birthday parties where people could come just for the day. So we would have multiple programs going on all year long. School groups during the year could come out and it would fulfill on their science curriculum for class. And it would be a great place. Ah, that's so fun. <laughs> yeah, and it would be a lot, a lot of fun. Oh, a lot of fun. Yeah. Hiking, horseback riding, just really having everybody fully engaged in nature, learning about it, and learning about how they can lower their footprint to make a difference. Oh, I'm excited. Me too. Yeah, you know, I remember you came to my kids' camping, and the kids were just so excited. Yeah. Wow, great. What actually triggered you to actually take action and follow your passion? Um, several years ago, I, I took the job with the zoo camp. And at, when I first took the job, I wasn't sure if it was going to be the right fit for me. It was an eight-week job. And, but I decided you know, it's eight weeks. If I don't like it, it's over in eight weeks. <laughs> I don't have to go back ever. Um, and in the first week of working at zoo camp, and working with the kids, with the animals, I was hooked. I was completely hooked. I really found, with the commitment of educating people about animals, all of a sudden, being at zoo camp and taking that job, I found the way that I wanted to do it. Um, there's lots of different ways that you can educate people about animals, and camp is just a very, very um, uh, specific environment. You know, it's fun, it's exciting, everybody's there to have fun, mm -hmm. the staff is having fun. It's just a very, very, there's a certain environment around being at camp. Mm -hmm. And I, I was hooked on it. And what happened was I, I kept the job all summer, had a blast. And um, I actually put in a proposal to the, to the company to expand and do more. And I did that, I expanded their their camp organization and what happened was every summer because that was our big season was the summer season 
at the beginning of summer, I was all excited and then just a little ways into it, I would come home and I would be upset and I would be crying and my husband would ask me, well, why are you crying? I'm like, cause camp is gonna end. And he's like, in like eight weeks, you have like eight more weeks of summer. Uh-huh. And I'd say, I know, but it's gonna end and then it's gonna be over and then I'm not gonna have any camp to do all the rest of the year. <laughs> and he said, honey, you just, you need to, you need to find a way to be able to do this all year. And I said, I know, but I don't know how to do that. (laughs) So it became a point where I found what I love to do so much that it became so painful to not be able to do it that when summer was over, it was so hard for me because I wasn't getting to do it anymore. That was just so painful that I went looking for how can I do this all year and I didn't find, I really didn't find anything that would fulfill the, a job that I could take. And so then I had several people start telling me, why don't you just start your own camp? And it sounded like a good idea. <laughs> <laughs> had no idea you know, what it was gonna take or how hard it was gonna be or any of that. So that's really, that's really how it all happened is I, I found what I wanted to do and loved it so much that it just became so painful to sit and do nothing that moving forward into the unknown was less painful than sitting and not having what I want. So Carrie, you know, we all struggle to find our passion. We mm-hmm. kind of uh, always ask ourselves, what do we, what should we do? What should I do when I grew up? Or even mm-hmm. like people, we are in 30s, 40s, we still ask this kind of question. Now. What kind of uh, struggles or, you know, pathways uh, for you to find your passion? Was it difficult or was it like always clear? Um, It's always been clear that I've been passionate about animals, but then other things come into play. How much money do I want to make? You know, where do I want to live? Things of that sort. And for me, finding my passion was getting really, really straight with myself about what is it that I really want to be doing. I want to be working with animals and I want to be teaching people. And to really find what it is that I wanted to do, for me, I had to set aside all my worries and concerns about, but how am I going to do that and make money? How am I going to do that and make a living? How am I going to, you know, where am I going to live? and just really focusing on this is what I want to do and pursuing that and the money and everything else just kind of takes care of itself. If you just, if you, what I found for myself is if I just pursue my passion and just stay focused on doing what is really important to me, all the other stuff kind of falls into place. Oh, wow, that's great. Most of us will worry about money. Well, yeah, <laughs> and I still worry about it. It's not like it goes away. But, you still, but just, just keep going. Just yeah. yeah, stay focused on what's really important, uh-huh. and that's I've just stayed focused on what's really, really important to me is teaching about animals, and all the other stuff is kind of taking care of itself. Wow. Fortunately. Wow. <laughs> Congratulations. Do you want to share that story? Uh, yeah. There is a point, though, just a couple years ago, actually, where the whole thing did take a turn for me. Uh That I was, I was, um, I was the director of a zoo camp. Uh I was running a zoo camp, and it was primarily a summer camp. Uh And it was just in the first like two weeks of of doing the job, and a little girl came up to me. It was the same situation where we were, it was primarily wildlife education that we were teaching about and I started to add the green living components to it because it was something that inspired me was to teach kids about green living. And a little girl came up to me, you know, totally classic. She came up and pulled my shirt, Carrie, Carrie, Carrie. And I turned and I said, yeah. And she said, guess what, guess what? I got my parents to recycle and they've never recycled before. And she turned around and ran away. She didn't wait for me to respond or anything. And I got so touched. I literally got choked up and I started to tear up. And I turned to my coworker and my coworker looked at me and she's like, are you okay? And I'm like, yeah, I'm gonna be okay, but 